Hello, my name's uh, John Swills and I head up a church uh, called Lighthouse, which is a, a church which seeks to proclaim the gospel and offer pastoral uh, care and support to those who are from the chaotic margins. This is uh, people who are battered and bruised by the storms of life with multiple and complex issues such as homelessness, addiction, ex-offenders and those uh, with serious uh, mental health issues. And as well as uh, head heading up this church, um, I, I'm also a tutor at uh, St Barnabas. But in this series of uh, uh, short videos, I want us to look at the Psalms of uh, Lament and I want us to learn uh, how to lament. This is something which I've, uh, a journey which I've been on myself and it's a journey which I hope that you're either on or will em embark on yourself. The Psalms are multiple, uh, multiple and, and varied and uh, there's different genres found uh, in the Psalms. For instance, Psalm 135 is that of descriptive prayers uh, begins with these words, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever. Descriptive prayers, it extols the uh, the virtues, uh, the general at attributes and actions of, of, of Yahweh, uh, the God of the whole earth. Uh, there's other psalms which we could call uh, declarative praise psalms. Uh, an example of that would be Psalm uh, 138, which says, uh, um, which says this, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart before the gods. I sing your praise. On the day I called, you answered me. My strength of soul, you increased. And the declarative praise psalms, they respond to how God has ministered in a particular, ex uh, in, in a particular experience that might be uh, in the Exodus or might be in answering an individual's prayer. Uh, we have other psalms, such as messianic psalms, which will look ahead to that uh, uh, coming King, who we we know is uh, is Jesus, um, Psalms of enthronement, which would be used when a, when a king was placed on the throne of Israel, and other Psalms which we may call wisdom Psalms, like Psalm uh, one two seven, and Psalms of songs of uh, which are songs of trust, such as Psalm forty six. Lots of different Psalms, um, but in these series of uh, a series of mini lectures and talks we're looking at particularly at the psalms of lament we may understand lament as a complex language of complaint protest and appeal directed to god these diverse laments share one commonality deep faith in god in the midst of pain so the psalms are the psalms of lament uh, they're to God. It's not just complaining for the sake of complaining or complaining to another human. This is bringing a complaint, a protest to God. Deep faith in God in the middle of deep pain. In fact, um, about a third of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. Uh, notice at the, uh, at the top of the page there that you have some Psalms which uh, community lament psalms this is where the community is bringing their complaint their petition to god it might be because of um they've been attacked it might be because disease is is rife in the community it might be uh, a lament of mourning for sin in a communal sense but then we also have individual lament psalms where an individual has been is in a crisis, is in a storm, and they're crying out to God. They're crying, God, would you come and deliver me? So these psalms are, are, are particularly uh, uh, frequent. Now, if you're in a church tradition which you used to, you, you go through the Psalter, then you'll be very, very familiar with these psalms of lament. You know, a third of them is... Uh, uh, are crying out to God. But if you're in perhaps a more sort of evangelical charismatic tradition, and yes, you use the Psalms in worship, you tend just to focus on the praise Psalms. You tend not to bring the uh, the Psalms of pain into, in, in, into worship. Um, but these Psalms show a great degree of uh, honesty. 
Uh, Brueggemann, Walter Brueggemann, the Old Testament scholar, says this. A study of lament may be a corrective for some religion in the church that wishes to withdraw from life as it really is, to pretense and romance in the unreal world of heavenly or holy things. The lament makes clear that faith and worship deal with and are shaped by life as it comes to us. So lament isn't about uh, pretending that the Christian life is, is something else, else than it really is, but rather uh, lament is honest about pain and brings it to God. Scott Ellington in his book Risking Truth says this, Prayer, we think, means presenting ourselves before God so that he will be pleased with us. We put in our Sunday best in our prayers. Prayers of lament fail to observe the niceties of due process. They are jarring, even violent, in their assault on decency and order. They are the language of the nobody, the outsider and the foreigner. Blind Bartimaeus will not lower his voice, speak civilly and wait his turn. And here we see that a lament isn't just politely saying to God, um, I am in pain. No, it's crying out in honesty that there's something wrong and praying that God would come and deliver us. For instance, the Psalms of Lament, um, they admit to God that we are prone to weakness. Let me just give you a few verses uh, for this. Uh, Psalm uh, 38 verse 10, the psalmist says, My heart throbs, my strength fails me, and the light of my eyes, it is also gone from me. Or Psalm 71 verse 9, Do not cast me off in the time of old, old age, Forsake me not when my strength is spent. Psalm 142 verse 3 also shows that a psalm lament brings a weakness before God. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. The psalms of lament also bring a disease to God so that the, uh, the individual body may be uh, hurting and they bring to God that physical pain. Example of this would be uh, Psalm uh, 62 uh, uh, verse 2 says this, Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. The, the Psalms of men bring their pain before God. Psalm 38 verse 17, the psalmist says, I'm ready to fall. My pain is ever before me. These psalms also speak of the disappointments in life. Psalm 13. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? And some of these psalms also speak of depression. The darkness of depression. And they bring it to God. Psalm 38 verse 6 says this. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. All day I go about mourning. Well, let's take Psalm 38 verse 8. I am feeble and crushed. I groan because of the tumult of my heart. It goes on and says my heart throbs. My strength fails me and the light of my eyes is has gone from me. Psalm 88 says these words, My soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am a man who has no strength, like one set loose among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep, your wrath lies heavy upon me and you overwhelm me with all your waves. Elsewhere, the Psalms of Lament call out to God that, they are, that the, the individual in the community are surrounded by their enemies. And these enemies, they seek to plot and bring destruction. They also lie about us. 
Psalm 7 and Psalm 17 is a lament that actually an innocent person is being taken to court because of false accusations. Psalm 28 talks about some enemies who seek to cause trouble. And Psalm 4 that these enemies bring shame on us. Psalm 88 verse 8 talks about lifelong friends who abandon us at our time of greatest need. And on and on and on we see the Psalms of lament are honest before God. This is not in a sense uh, a mid middle class British response to you know you, you meet someone you say how are you and they'll say I'm fine. But they don't really mean I'm fine. They mean they're in a place of pain. A uh, place of pain. The Psalms of Lament. They follow a dif different language. They follow a place of honesty. A bring the pain before God. But is it really? The, the, qu the question we have now is. Surely bringing all this pain to God. Is really something which is really the cry of the faithless of the faithless the people who have no faith they're complaining all the time before God they're not just full of prayers all the time they're actually talking about their struggles surely this is the uh, the cry of the faithless CS Lewis and normally I agree with CS Lewis um, but here I have a few problems. He says this, The dominant impression I get from reading the Psalms is one of antiquity. I seem to be looking into a deep pit of time, but looking through a lens which brings the figures who inhabit that depth up close to my eye. In that momentary pro proximity, they are almost shockingly alien. Creatures of unrestrained restrained emotion, wallowing in self-pity, sobbing, cursing, screaming in exultation, clashing uncouth weapons or dancing to the din of strange musical instruments. Quite frankly, C.S. Lewis thinks that the, the psalmists are, are really not British enough. They're not reserved enough. Instead, they are just honest to God and they bring unrestrained emotion with the psalms of lament bringing what seems like self-pity and sobbing and even cursing of the enemies. But actually, the Israelites and those who wrote the Psalms did not, uh, do not think about lament as we do. The overwhelming presence of the language of complaint, questioning and protest in the Psalms suggests that Israel had a different view of the nexus among lament, faith and prayers. For instance, the uh, Psalms of lament are often placed on the lips of um the heroes of the faith, often in a sub uh, in a, sense, a, a subtitle before the psalm itself. Uh, for instance, uh, Moses, um, uh, Moses' name is is attributed as that uh, behind Psalm the Psalm ninety, which is a psalm of lament. For instance, the figure David, who was a man after God or God's own heart, his name is put next to 38 of the Psalms of Lament, including Psalm 22 and Psalm 38. Various temple leaders, such as Ethan, Korah, Heman and Asa, these are the worship leaders of the ancient world, at the place where Yah Yahweh's presence dwelt. And yet in Psalm 89, 42 and 43, 88, 77 and 79, their names are placed as the, as the authors of the Psalms of Lament. In the Psalms, it is not those who lack faith who lament, but those recognised for strong faith who bring their most honest and passionate feelings to God. The same understanding uh, of the connection between lament and faith extends beyond uh, the book of Psalms into the lives of the, of the heroes of the faith, such as uh, Jeremiah, Job and Habakkuk. 
in six famous passages in Jeremiah chapter 11, chapter 12, 15, 17, 18 and chapter 20. Uh, Jeremiah laments. He asks, 12 verse 1, why does the way of the guilty prosper? He also asks why his own pain is unceasing. Chapter 15 verse 18. He begs God for healing. Chapter 17 verse 14. And for God to deal with his opponents. Chapter 18, 19 to 23. At a very low moment of his life, Jeremiah curses the day of his birth. And he also brings charges against God that God has been unjust. In chapter 15 verse 18 he says this, Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Elsewhere he accuses God of misusing power. O oh Lord, you have enticed me and I was enticed. You have overpowered me and you have prevailed. Jeremiah was a man of faith, but he brought his complaints to God. He lamented before God. He was known as the weeping prophet. In the book of Job as well, we see how Job deals with his suffering by bringing his cries to God. Uh, in the book of Hab Habakkuk, we see that Habakkuk could not understand how God could look at what's, what was happening in the Judean society and do nothing about it. Listen to these words. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exult in in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. So we see that the Psalms are incredibly, uh, Psalms of the Men are incredibly, incredibly frequent in the book of Psalms. They come from a place of honesty, bringing real life suffering to God. And that these are, these are not the prayers of the faithless. Rather, these are the prayers and the cries of the fearful. Glenn Be uh, Pemberton, in his book Hurting with God, says this. Moreover, by the sheer number of laments in the Psalms, it would appear that one major point of the book is this very point. God invites his people to speak the truth of their lives, their pain and their con fusion to the one who can do something about it and what is true of the old testament is also true of jesus and the early church in john uh, chapter 11 verse 35 we see that jesus is someone who weeps jesus weeps in luke 19 it says this um, that uh, when jesus drew near to jerusalem he saw the city and he wept over it. That Jesus was not someone who uh, was emotionally aloof, but rather he was emotionally engaged and he would weep before God. Matthew 26 verse 36 to 46 says this, Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there in prayer. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And then he said, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Notice that Jesus, Jesus is saying to God, My soul is sorrowful even to he was sorrowful and troubled and he was praying. And I wonder what he prayed. Did he, did he use some of the Psalms of Lament? In fact, when Jesus was on the cross, we know he used a Psalm of Lament. Um, uh, Psalm 22 verse 1. The Psalm of Lament begins with these words. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you far from saving me from the words of my groaning? And we see that Jesus uses these very words on the cross 
he quotes from a psalm of lament. Less well known is that uh, when Jesus cries out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. This is evoking the psalm of lament, uh, Psalm 31, which says, Into your hands I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, fearful God. Jesus, the Gospel writers, portray Jesus as using the Psalms of Lament uh, as he's dying. Hebrews 5 verse 7 says this, In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. So the book of Hebrews says that in the days that Jesus walked around uh, walked around this earth. Jesus offered up prayers with loud cries and tears. Jesus was a man who brought raw emotion to God the Father, crying out to him with tears in his eyes. We know also that the early church uh, continued to use the whole of uh, the book of Psalms. As Ephesians 5 verse 18 says this, Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing hymns, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. The early church were to sing the psalms and I don't think this just meant the psalms of uh, descriptive or declarative praise. No, the whole of the book of psalms was very, very likely used. In the book of Revelation we see that the martyrs are gathered around the throne also lament. They bring their sustained cry of pain to God. Revelation 6 verse 10 says this, they cried out with a loud voice, O sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell in dwell on the earth the psalms the early church jesus echo that of the old testament uh, faithful who were honest before god in bringing their psalms of lament that raises questions what about in the contemporary church i just want you to think now for a moment you might want to pause this video what lament songs do we sing in the church today? Now, as I've taught this material elsewhere, some people always say, well, you've got the song, Blessed Be Your Name. And it's right, the song, uh, Blessed uh, Be Your Name, was written by uh, uh, Matt Redman in a, in, a, in a place of pain. And that really says, it does talk about uh, it does bring that pain before God, you know, to bless Him when things are plentiful and bless Him when we're when we're when we're struggling. But I would say that the tempo generally of that song is of an upbeat tempo. So we're singing words of uh, some of the words of lament, but we're actually doing to an upbeat tempo, and there's, there's a little bit of a mis mismatch uh, going on there. I wonder if you um, if you could think of any other uh, psalms of lament which we regularly uh, sing in church or even occasionally sing in church. If so, um, do, do do let me know. There is one uh, one song which was was really popular sort of a few years ago, and that's the "As the Deer," um, and that pick, is picking up on a psalm of lament, uh, Psalm forty two, which talks about the deer panting for water. And the, the worship song um, it goes like this. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield, etc., etc. And I just want to quote some words here from a blogger called Internet Monk. And he says this. In the case of As the Deer, the sentiment, the image evokes is desire for God. We long for God like a thirsty deer longs for water. That's fine as it goes, but rather than, 
meditating on how the biblical author is actually using this image. We interpret it in a way that is easily grasped in our cultural milieu, in a romantic fashion. God is my heart's desire. I find my satisfaction in worshipping him. He's a friend. He's a brother. I love him more than anything. But this is manifestly not what the image refers to in Psalm 42. It is not a desire for God in a romantic or intimate sense that the psalmist is writing about. It is a desire for God in the context of lament. The psalmist longs for God not because he has a precious personal relationship with God and wants to celebrate it. Rather, he pines for God because he can't find him. He's as desperate as a deer who can't find water in the wilderness. He is so far away from God, he sees little chance of being able to find him. He can't stop crying. Everyone and everything around him is mocking his belief in, in a God who loves him. His soul is cast down. His heart is disquieted within him. He fears God has forgotten him. That's why he's thirsty for God. He's dying of thirst for an absent God. Isn't that interesting that when a worship leader comes and wants to write a psalm based on uh, Psalm 42, instead of picking up this desperate cry, the cry of an absent God, instead it puts it in more sort of a romantic um, uh, desire and after God terms. So if, if, you're, if you're watching this as a worship leader, it's just a challenge. Where are the songs of lament? And the Psalms, when they bring lament, it's not just one line. So it may be that you thought some songs like, oh, there's a couple of songs here which, which mention a bit of pain. Well, just remember that Psalms are sustained crying out for God, bringing that pain and bringing that honesty to God. Well, this is the uh, first in a little mini series of videos. Um, but let me... Oh, let me just, uh, let me just say that... Uh, uh, mention this quote because it is a good one uh, from uh, Jenkins in the house of the Lord inhabiting the Psalms of Lament and he says this we cannot expect a people's understanding of God to reach much higher than their hymn books the hymns we sing and the readings of scripture we hear in worship form the text that forms us if we want our people to worship our churches to worship then we really need to be leading them from the front Pemberton, in the book Hurting with God, he says this, The vibrant language of lament is dead to us. All texts may remain, and a few rather odd people may read what was once a living language. But for most of us, it has become a curious museum piece in our Bibles. Expressions of unresolved pain, confusion, desperation and sorrow. In other words, lament are nearly extinct. So what is all over the Psalms, what was doubtless close to Jesus' own heart, was used by the early church, it is in some church traditions, and I think we could put the evangelical charismatic uh, tradition in this, absent, it's nearly extinct. And, uh, you know, the reason of doing these videos is because it's really a call for us as a church to really learn to lament again. In my uh, context at a lighthouse in Leeds, we've unfortunately seen a number of people die in tragic circumstances. A few people uh, take their lives. And when you're there by the... Let me just, well, let me just uh, intend to speak from the heart with a true story. Um, I've got a text from someone saying... Uh, from, from a friend called Phil, who we'd baptised and had a wonderful conversion... Um, but he wasn't well, and he texted and said, "John, I'm just, I'm just going to the chapel to pray. I'll see you on the other side." A few minutes later, I went up to the chapel. He wasn't there. I texted him and he said, "I'm at home having my last cup of tea." And so myself and a colleague, we went up to uh, Phil's house. We knocked knocked on the door. He didn't answer. We rang the police. The police came and kicked the door. Uh, police and the ambulance crew came, kicked the door down, and Phil had hung himself. He'd taken his own life. A few hours later, I found myself in the room next to Phil's body, anointing his head with oil. And inside, I was crying out, Lord, where are you? 
Lord, come and deliver, deliver me. Lord, were you, were, you, were you blind to his suffering? Lord, were you deaf to his suffering? Lord, come and help. And actually, in my own process of, of mourning and bringing that pain before God, I was able to, I found it helpful to write a few psalms of lament. And uh, let me just share, share one with you now. For the brothers, a psalm of Lighthouse. Rescue us, O Lord, from our enemies without and within. The demons chase, the voices speak, and the addictions call. How long, O God, will I soak my bed with tears? How long, O God, will I feel like my prayers fall unanswered? Consider my prayer, O Lord, my deliverer. Light up my eyes, open my ears, give strength to my heart. I know that you are not indifferent to my suffering. I know you make all things new. I know that true power and love reside in you. Rise, O Lord, let my enemies be scattered. Subdue the demons, silence the voices, break the addictions, rescue us, O Lord.